Hey guys, what's up? Happy Monday. It's February 24th and Laravel 12 is finally released. So this is what you will see when you start up a Laravel project. So here we are in the new Laravel 12 landing page and it's a significant difference from the old version, Laravel 11. So compared to Laravel 11, uh, Laravel 12 went for a more minimalistic approach as far as the landing page goes. Now aside from Laravel 12 being hot off the press, the Laravel website also got a fresh new design featuring some opinionated packages about the ecosystem. What's interesting down here is that they take a different approach to different types of topics in the Laravel documentation. And then to the right, we have the starter kits and we have packages and different products. So like Laravel Cloud, Nightwatch, Nova, and Forge. Like Forge and Nova have been around, Nightwatch and Cloud are new. But I wanna take a look at the starter kits. Let's just check this out. So this is the dedicated page for the Laravel starter kits. And you get a nice overview here from Josh, developer relations at Laravel. And what's really cool is um, they give you a preview of each one. So this is the React preview. And if you take a quick look at the URL up here, you can see that it's running on Laravel Cloud, which also got released today. I don't want to get segued, but this is a whole nother topic. And I'm looking forward to getting to this one. But if we go back to the starter kit, and this is the React starter kit, uh, we click on the login, and this is the layout for the login. We have the sign up page. And we go back to login and then we have forgot password. And I believe you get all the relevant pages that you would find in the previous scaffolds in the Laravel project. So let's take a look at the view startup kit. So the initial preview for all starter kits are going to have this initial look and feel, it seems like. And I'm pretty much sure it's the same thing for Livewire as well. And yeah, it is. So let's take a look a little further down and we'll see that they have built in authentication with optional layouts. Um, this is really kind of cool. Work OS, I want to take a look at that as well. That looks interesting and down here more customization and the profile page. Let's scroll down a little bit further and as far as configuring the responsive layouts, it's looking to be as convenient as a simple word change in your Laravel 12 application. And they really stress that how everything can be fully customizable, which is kind of cool. So let's create one of these projects. We'll start with React. So I want to show you something. If you type in Laravel new and you want to create a new React project, this is not going to work right off the bat because it's going to give you the old Laravel installer. So you'll only get no starter kit, Breeze, and Jetstream. So we'll just cancel this, right? And what we need to do is globally install the new Laravel installer. And if you're using the terminal, the command for that is composer global require Laravel installer. And we'll update that. Now I've already went ahead and updated this, but I wanted to show you that gotcha. So we'll clear this. Then the command would be Laravel new and the name of your app. So in this case, React 19. Now, if you're also using Laravel herd, so not only do you have to update the global installer, but you might have to get to the latest version of herd, which is 1.16 as of this recording. And then what we can do is just create a new Laravel project and we can pick which starter kit we want to use. So we're going to say react for this one. We're going to say next. I'm going to save this to a particular directory. And in my case, it's going to be herd. Then you can pick the authentication provider. And I want to show you guys this after it's work OS. Um, but we'll start with this one for now and we'll choose pest. We'll initialize a repository and we'll give our project a name. And then finally our application is created. So we'll hit close. Okay. So we're not going to create a new react 19 app because we've already done that in Laravel herd. And we're going to run through the same process that we did in Laravel herd, but we're just doing this through the command line. So we're going to jump down to view and we're going to keep the first option pest. And we're going to do this one more time. And this is for live wire starter kit. And we're going to choose Livewire. And I'm going to pick a different option here. I'm going, to, I'm going to choose Work OS. I'm going to say Pest, let that build. I'm going to clear this and let's check out our projects. So this is the React 19 project. And this one was created with Herd. And this one's our View project. Finally, this one's called LW.Flux. This is our Flux Livewire. So here is our three projects using the starter kit. And we're going to jump over to the React project. And we can see that the login, forgot password, and sign up is the same as the demo or the preview that we saw. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna wait before I click onto the login button because we're using work OS and we need something else before we can see that. So let's just jump back over here and check this out in our editor. Okay, hopefully this is not too crazy. I've got three applications opened up here in PHP Storm, the React, the Vue version, and the Livewire version with the starter kits. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump back over to the React one. So for the React app, let's just quickly try to update the uh, auth scaffold or the layout. So that's found inside of the auth layout. So we're gonna just quickly search for that. So we're gonna type in auth layout and we're gonna look for this one here. So it's the auth layout and it's the TSX file. So what we're gonna do is, I guess it's as simple as just changing this to like say split. And then we're gonna build it. I'm gonna go back out here and refresh and it's really that easy. 
So you can switch the authentication layout by just typing in either simple, card, or split. So let's change the view one next. We're gonna change this one, and we're gonna make it a card. I'm gonna close the terminal here, and I'm gonna to go to the view application. So we're gonna search for the auth layout uh, dot view file. And this layout is set to auth simple layout, and we're just gonna change this to card. We're gonna open terminal, and we're gonna do a build. I'm gonna jump to our browser, refresh. And now we have the view starter kit using the card layout instead of the simple layout, which is like insanely convenient. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna create a user. And here we are in the view project with the sidebar layout. And if you take a look, like some of these components look familiar. And if we wanna change it to the header layout, jump back into the project, we'll close this. We'll go to the app layout. And right here, we'll change it to header. And now we have the header layout for your dashboard. And you can also check the repository here. Um, each starter kit has its own repo. And if we check our settings, this is the layout for view. And this component looks kind of familiar. It kind of mimics the Flux UI style component that we talked about. Uh, check that out in the previous video, guys, if you're interested. I guess the question is, how do you add components to each one of these starter kits? And it turns out that each one of these starter kits has its own component library. So in this case of React, you can use ui.shad.cn.com. And then you just find the component that you want to publish. So you go to components and we'll pick this drop down menu. So you can use PNPM, you can use NPM yarn or bun. So for the NPM command, you would just copy this right here. And now we're in a React component library. So if we go back to our project and we jump back to our React project and we open up our terminal and I'll clear this. And then we just paste this in. And in this case, it looks like I picked the component that already exists. So we'll grab another one and I'll just grab the slider. And if I go to the components directory and I check out UI and I scroll down, you'll see that I just added the slider, which came from the ui.shadcn library. And the usage is right below here. And in our view application, we can check that the usage is actually the same thing here. So in this one, it's still shadcn, but we're just using the view components instead of the React. And for our LiveWire application, LiveWire supports the new Flux 2 official LiveWire component library. So I'm just gonna close these for now. And I wanna head over to this one. And if we try to log in, we get this, because we chose work OS. Um, it's giving us in the configuration file that this value is undefined. So now you don't have to use this and it was optional and we chose this when we set up our project initially. But what it's using is AuthKit. And AuthKit is powered by work OS. So in order to use work OS, you're gonna have to create an account. And inside your .env file, because we chose work OS, you'll see that you'll have this here. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to provide the correct variables for work OS and the API key that is provided in your dashboard. If you guys are interested in this, let me know. This is really useful. I enjoy work OS, it's actually pretty cool. Um, so let's go back to our application over here. So now we're inside of our LiveWire application, which is using work OS. And if we click log in, now I went behind the scenes and I kind of set up everything. But in order to go through that, that's like a whole nother lesson, a whole nother tutorial. So you get social authentication right out of the box. So Google, Microsoft, GitHub, and Apple. So single sign-on would be useful if you're signing into multiple application with uh, one set of credentials. So if you wanted to sign up and use like say your Apple ID or something like that, it's ready to go for you. There's a lot of new stuff going on. There's a lot of great changes in the Laravel 12 community ecosystem today. And Laravel 12 is finally released with a lot of features. And there's a lot to cover. There's Laravel Cloud, there's uh, Nightwatch, and a bunch of other things. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Uh, be sure to comment. Let me know what your thoughts are, guys, if you want to see more tutorials like this. And if you can, definitely get your hands on Laravel 12 and check out some of the new things that are available in the platform. That's it for this one, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please leave me your thoughts and comments. Do check out the description below for additional resources. And if you're looking for additional content, I highly recommend that you watch the next upcoming video.